that we're back, we're live. This is Think Tech Global Connections, and we're talking about the tunnels, the tunnels of Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, with our old friend, Dr. Rupmati Khandakar, uh, who is in New York, and she is our global reporter covering anything of global consequence. Thank you very much, Rupmati, for joining us today. Hello, Ajay. Thank you for having me uh, with you. Always my pleasure. And mine. So we were talking about tunnels today. Tunnels are all the rage because tunnels uh, are at the center, or at least an important factor in the Israeli decision to um, do a ground war uh, in uh, in Gaza. And so um, I guess the first thing I'd like to know from your studies and your reporting, uh, what are those tunnels like in Gaza? What what what's the engineering of them? Uh, what's the dimensions of them? What is in them? Uh, what is what are the considerations uh, about going into them and attacking Hamas? Correct. Since the October seventh um, uh, terrorist attack on Israel, uh, retaliation was expected, and Israel did the right thing by not saying that they want to eliminate Palestine or anything. They said they wanted to eliminate Hamas, the terrorist organization responsible for the terrorist attack on Israel. So uh, they are very clear about the aim. Uh, and uh, Jay, we had spoken about the tunnel network. Now, Gaza has been under land, sea, and air blockade uh, by Israel to vacate, uh, to uh, remove the civilians from the Gaza uh, Strip. Now, as we know, Gaza is one of the most densely populated areas of uh, uh, the world. And to give you an opening idea of the tunnel network, Gaza is around 88 uh, uh, square miles uh, and 1.5 times the area of Gaza, there is a tunnel network underneath the city. So we understand that oh, all this um, network is helping Hamas store their ammunition, store, hide themselves and uh, present a very formidable underground warfare to a very highly sophisticated uh, technology that Israel has. Now, this underground warfare is presenting a problem, Jay, because literally it is underground. It is not uh, detected by the drones, surveillance uh, um, area uh, equipment of the Israelis. So, Jay, uh, we can go back <clears throat> to around uh, 2000 and we start with Hezbollah. Hezbollah had made these tunnels to attack uh, Israel in 2018. So they came in and they used these to infiltrate uh, Israel from the Lebanon border. And when in 2018 uh, Israel destroyed them, Hamas had already uh, made from 2007, they were digging these things with Egypt. And it was used initially as smuggling of arms and ammunition from the Rafa border to, uh, to Egypt. When Egypt destroyed them in 2010, they, they, they realized they could use this exact technology to infiltrate Israel. And we have around, uh, they were used in the October 7th attack. And uh, when they came in, you see, Jay, these are not uh, dug with uh, sophisticated machinery. They are used by simple technology. And it is a network of uh, which is um, it's a 2.5 feet uh, height is around six feet, and this ranges for kilometers, uh, miles and miles. If suppose you say it is around 350 uh, miles is uh, uh, the 500, network. 500 kilometers, yeah. Yeah, 500 kilometers. That is equivalent to uh, the. Uh, uh, bigger than 100 miles, uh, bigger than uh, my, uh, square miles, bigger than the London underground. So can you imagine they are interconnected? They are highly uh, self-contained uh, tunnels. That means they have enough uh, area to store their missiles, their food. The they have secret rooms. They have uh, they have these strategic points uh, where they can have access to all the uh, Gaza points. And Jay, one smart thing that they have done is that the entry points and exit points, and this is a very important point, because they have made it 
which enter hospitals, schools, civilian buildings, which can never be targeted by any military of any nation. So they have openings to the tunnels which are in these sensitive points. They have not made it uh, open uh, access. All of them are in civilian areas. And this is the exact reason why Israel is pressing on that the civilians have to evacuate and they want to bomb. Whatever they knew of through intelligence, they have already bombed. And you see them bombing these buildings because they have access points to these tunnels. And Jay, North Gaza has more tunnels than the rest of the area. But the network is spread all throughout Gaza. Make no mistake about that. And, you know, it is 130 feet below the ground. And the width, like I told you, it's around 2.5 and 6 feet. They have these bikes which move inside. There are videos which show you the bike within the uh, tunnel. And you see these missiles which are put in a line. And that was where Hamas was getting 5,000 rockets to fire into Israel. Where did they store it? They store it in these tunnels. And the tunnel network becomes very, very important because um, not only uh, do they provide um, shelter to these uh, uh, militants, Jay, the main, main point is that they have a lot of ammunition. And when the Israeli army will go in, these ammunition points will serve as minefields for the uh, Hamas terrorists. They can use it as the Israeli army advances along with the snipers in the buildings. They can use these tunnels as mines. So, you know, 1.5 times the size of the city, underlying the city and filled with ammunition and terrorists, it's a very tough task for the Israeli army to handle. And on top of that, if you're putting human shields of hostages, if you're putting human shields of, uh, you know, civilians, it becomes all the more difficult, and especially with the social media pressure, we see that they are presenting it as a war between Israel and Palestine. It is not a war between Israel and Palestine. It is Israel versus the terrorist organization. It is always has to be made clear that is Israel versus Hamas, a terrorist organization. And the tunnel network is their biggest defense ever. And as soon as they destroy this, we are going to have a, a humanitarian, uh, humanitarian inclined uh, Gaza. I'll tell you why. Because the money that is diverted for humanitarian aid, Jay, that is being used for these building these tunnels. Around, uh, around say, uh, how many? One, one, one point five billion dollars is the amount estimated to come build these tunnels this 500 kilometers 1.5 billion and 1000 billion one yeah is the amount that comes into gaza as humanitarian aid 1 billion and 1.5 billion has been used for these concrete tunnels so you see they're not using it for uh, humanitarian things because one tunnel can build you uh, it is 350 trucks of concrete is used for building these tunnels. And in that same amount, which you build a two by two kilometer by four kilometer tunnel, you can build around 86 houses, um, 19 medical uh, clinics, six schools and seven mosques. Imagine all that is going to build one tunnel. So Hamas is diverting the money that comes into Gaza for humanitarian purposes to build these tunnels. And 1.5 billion is not a small amount, Jay. So they have been using all the aid, and even Israel gives them uh, concrete to build civilian houses. Even that has been diverted because, Jay, pick up any video, you see that the tunnels are well concreted. They have electricity, they have internet access, they have uh, uh, supplies of food, they have they have ammunition storage. So it's a very um, potent weapon of war that Hamas possesses, which has to be destroyed well. How deep did you say they are? Uh, one, uh, 1.5 below the ground. 1.5 under? How far down? They are like 130 feet below the ground. Mm -hmm. And they're 2.5 meters broad and 6 feet in height. So uh, one thing that interests me is you say that 
the the uh, access to the tunnels are um, under what hospitals and uh, residential buildings and what have you. Um, what is it? What, are, what does one of these access points look like? Jay, they must be opening. Uh, you know the flaps which open from the ground. You you have secret doors which come you know from the ground, and uh, strategically you see they ha do have support of civilians. They do have support. In schools, Jay, they open up in schools, they open up in mosques, they open up in hospitals. So, uh, you see, these are targets which, you know, in uh, warfare also people hesitate to, uh, to target. And Hamas has made sure that access and entry into these points is going to be at such places where they will never be denied access into this. Mm -hmm. Now, how to deal with them? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go to that. Uh, so I just want to get one more point. I, I have I have seen and I've heard that um, that uh, Hamas is able to fire um, missiles and rockets and drones, uh, which they keep in the tunnels along the side of the tunnel um, from those access points. And so those access points would be outside, I suppose, and then they would flip open the door to the access point. Uh, they would bring up the rocket or the missile, what have you. Uh, they would fire it, and then they would bring the, you know, the, the the mechanism for the rocket back down into the into the tunnel, close the door, and nobody would know where where the rocket came from. Am I right? Correct. Is that what's happening? Correct. Uh, you know, they had like how we have the wiring on the top of the tunnel, uh, on the ceiling of the tunnel. On your arm's length, you'll have missiles lining the entire length and breadth of the tunnel. So that's the kind of ammunition that they hold. And what you said was absolutely right. And one more point, Jay. Hamas knew that when they they uh, attack Israel with this terrorist uh, move, they will expect a retaliation. Israel, Israel will retaliate. But they have, I feel it's like a trap that they're laying for the army to come in. And they know their capability that, you know, the, the, mind, the mind process of the uh, network is like a suicide bomb that they will use the network for. They will have points where they have huge ammunition in small, small tunnels, and they will use to blow it up. That is a very big danger that the Israeli army is facing. And for that, you know, we have, you know, uh, Jay, um, the surveillance and the civilians have to get out for a complete complete uh, proper retaliation to be done by the Israeli army. Yeah, you, <clears throat> yeah they, they're going to have uh, mines and other um, explosive devices in those tunnels, which they can probably trigger by either the internet. You said there was internet cable in there and, um, uh, or by uh, some kind of remote radio signal within the tunnel mm -hmm. or uh, automatically. In other words, you step on a mine or you pass a certain point in the tunnel and it blows you up. So the Israelis have a pretty big challenge on their hands because uh, as long as those tunnels exist, um, Hamas is is in operating mode. As long as those tunnels exist, they, Hamas has a place for its missiles and its ammunition, food, water, all the things that it needs for uh, supply. Um, as long as those tunnels exist, they have a place to uh, hold the hostages um, and themselves. Um, so, and I'm sure they have plans on which, which the, the tunnels. I saw a chart of the tunnels, and they and they turn, as you said, is what do they call it? It's the Hamas Metro. They turn yeah. left, they turn right, um, and you. It's like a it's like a maze, and you have to know which way is going. And we don't. The Israelis don't. So they're going to have to figure a way to, to deal with all the, the tricks and surprises that Hamas has built in. You know, and one interesting point that I heard made is that, uh, is that Israel has been waiting two weeks now to attack those tunnels. And in those two weeks, Hamas has been fortifying those tunnels and supplying those tunnels and getting ready. One commentator said, well, they must be tired down there. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think they're not tired. They're they're preparing. And yes, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. 
they are preparing jay i mean you 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 are facing one of the most potent uh, armies in the world and you have the guts to stand in front of them because they have plans jay the terrorist attack was just part of the plan i mean i told you like last time we discussed that the ultimate goal for them is to establish islam and eliminate the front so for them israel is the enemy and you have these people uh, who supply there is a, there is also that iran supplies them spare parts for the machinery that they have and the assembly of the entire thing takes place in the tunnels they have enough space for assembly of uh, 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 ammunition and warfare in those tunnels it's not just a cramped up place it's a fully functional city down there so yeah. that is dangerous that's yeah, remarkable remarkable how they designed it so well and at the same time as we were discussing before the show uh, the militants are motivated they're motivated to you know fight um one thing that came out in the news is the that uh, to motivate them on october 7th they were promised uh, an apartment um, and ten thousand dollars in American money, cash, uh, to go out and uh, and and kill Jews, and they were given drugs um, to, um, I guess, uh, motivate them and make them uh, more dangerous. Can you talk about that? Yeah, see, they had the um, captagon captagon drug, uh, which is uh, manufactured in. I think it was. Uh, manufactured in Germany, if uh, I'm right. And it's a party drug. They use it to keep your energy high and uh, they make sure that you don't feel guilty in what you're doing. Now, this point of feeling guilty was when these terrorists came in and started killing civilians and babies and all that. They didn't have to feel guilty and stop the mission. So, I mean, they have found in the pockets huge amounts of this captagon drug and this kept them in a frenzy in which they attacked all these civilians and they went on a rampage of uh, this savage rampage because of they were under the influence of drugs so uh, they used yeah, I, I, I suggest to you and be interested in your thoughts about it that uh, as and when the israelis go into those tunnels trying to root them out they're going to be on those drugs and um, uh, they're going to be suicidal on those drugs it's like wearing a, a suicide vest they won't care about getting killed. They'll be on the drugs. Uh, do, you, do you imagine that would happen? Exactly, Jay. I mean, let's come down to that uh, low level that not only the Hamas fighters are suicidal, they have even made the networks suicidal. The drone of, uh, drone of Iran is a suicidal drone, isn't it? It goes and just bombs itself. So they come <laughs> down to basically <laughs> this level. I mean, we when they are ready, I'll tell you, we value life. They bring it down to no life. They don't value their life. So what can be put at stake for them? Yeah. When they're at suicide level, we don't know what to do with them. So uh, all this waiting, uh, the points, entry points, uh, stopping of food, water, you come out civilians, is why? Because Israel values life more than Hamas. Yes. And Hamas is ready to give up their life. Israel is ready to preserve life. It's a big difference, Jay. Big it's difference. A black and white. So let's There's talk no about the second part of our examination of these tunnels. Um, what what do we know, or what can we think about? Uh, what can we imagine um, the Israelis can do? I mean, well, the Israelis have made it clear uh, they're preparing to go into these tunnels. They understand um, and accept the fact that they were surprised on October seventh. And the, the plans that Hamas came up with were a surprise. Now, likewise, they feel that they have to have, and they do have, surprises that they will use in going into the tunnels. But what might those be? Yeah, Jay, uh, unknown territory now coming up, uh, and we don't have an iron dome for this. So uh, this is the most sophisticated uh, machinery versus gorilla war gorilla suicidal warfare so kind of the balance is uh, very very 
precarious because we don't know what to expect in this kind of warfare. Now, I'll tell you, in, we, in Israel, we have a Yavalom unit, which is a specialized unit that deals with underground, uh, exactly this, there's a unit, and it is, no, it is actually known as Combat Engineering Corps. But they do, uh, they're specialists in the underground operations. They're the largest uh, unit and most efficient unit in uh, dealing with these underground uh, tunnels. But they make their own weapons, Jen. Nobody knows which weapons they use. And uh, they destroy the tunnels with um, completely, but you know, it's a unit. And we are, we are facing a city of tunnels. So that is just taking up the delay. But, uh, you know, we have to make the entire Israeli army <laughs> the Yavalom unit right now. It has to be quick training and for this combat. Now, Jay, there is a clear this defini definition of dealing with tunnels that you bomb the tunnels. Second would be more uh, not uh, recommend, not accepted worldwide would be gassing, you know, putting gas into the tunnels to bring out the rats from the tunnels. So that would be, you know, uh, um, that would be at a later stage if Israel really feels it. But they cannot escape this onslaught because they have bought it onto themselves. Imagine, but, you know, that... on gas, on gas, I was thinking about gas. So, <laughs> it, it, you know, in the old days, the dentists used, huh. used to use laughing gas. Uh -huh. um, and there are all kinds of gases that are not necessarily poison or lethal gases, but they disable you, you know, make them unconscious or unable to uh, engage with guns. Um, so that, you know, gas, gas has got to be part of this. If, if they can find, if they can develop a gas that isn't necessarily in violation of uh, what, whatever conventions are involved, the Geneva Convention, poison gas was outlawed after World War I. Um, but, um, you know, two thoughts about that. Number one is, um, I think there are other gases that, that are not poison for that, uh, for that convention. And the other is, um, I think we have to realize, and somebody said this in a, in a program I was watching today, somebody said that, you know, what Hamas is doing, the atrocities, the war crimes, um, these things with the tunnels, is rewriting these things are rewriting the rules of war. They're rewriting those conventions because you have to find a way to deal with them. Anyway, okay, so gas is a possibility. What else? Yes. Bombing them outright, bombing them outright. The, the siege that will happen, two ways, you know, you have uh, the uh, air missiles, which will uh, be simultaneous with the ground, will be <clears throat> reinforcing the ground units. And, uh, you know, you'll have a very comprehensive attack that will take place with the Yavalom unit heading the, spearheading the attack. So that's going to be kind of a very precarious situation that's going to be brought in. But it has to be a concerted effort because, Jay, this is a very intelligent, rat-minded enemy that they're dealing with. And we have, we cannot afford to forget that they do have hostages which will be presented every every point. When, you know, they delayed two American hostages, they, they put the Israeli army on the back foot and they wanted more time. That was the way they bought time, that, you know, the hope that they will release more hostages was the uh, thing which delayed the action even further. So they are playing mind games. With yeah, and I don't, think, I don't think we can be all that optimistic about the safe return of the hostages because they will be, they are being put in harm's way. Let me offer another possibility to you. It's uh, robotics. Um, these tunnels you said are mm, mm, two and a half feet wide, six feet tall. Um, there are missiles and the like along the sides. Uh, if the Israelis had a, a robotic that would walk down the tunnel or an, explo an explosive device that would stay in the tunnel until they triggered it, okay, then they could get out of the tunnel again. They could trigger it or it would it would walk autonomously by itself into the tunnel. And when it found anything of interest, it could blow itself up. And if that happened, a number of results. Number one is it would bring the tunnel down at that place. 
Although I think we have to recognize the tunnels are actually made of steel. So it's not that easy to bring them down. It's not like an earthen tunnel or an old mine with with wooden wooden supports. No, this is steel. Um, so you have to have a real serious explosion to bring it down. Um, number two is it, it might uh, explode the ordnance, um, the rockets, the missiles that are lined up along the sides, the walls. Number three, uh, if they were there, it would it would kill it would kill Hamas. Uh, and then maybe that's the way you set this up so that it it only activates uh, when there's Hamas people there. And number four, I suppose, um, it would kill uh, any hostages. And I think, you know, uh, the Israelis could be making a decision about that, that they they regrettably are victims of war. They're casualties of war, and they're part of this process. It seems to me that robotics, how, however smart, you know, are dangerous to everyone around, including, you know, the hostages who undoubtedly are in the tunnels. So they have to make the calculus around that. But I, I think they should be considering robotics. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, the only, uh, what is that, Impel, you know, the barrier that to any action for uh, us is that the sheer size of it, Jay. Kilometers and kilometers and kilometers running. It's a city that we have finished before you get into Hamas. With civilian breakpoints, speed breakers at every point. I, uh, uh, and uh, Hamas has been doing this since 2007, J. So that's um, that's been a long time since they have been building these tunnels. And uh, fortifying these tunnels used habituating themselves to live in these kind of conditions is what has made them very strong. You know, how, how long did it take to go to the Tora Bora Mountains in Afghanistan? The All same right. thing over here, they've gone underground and made an entire uh, place down. So this kind of um, imbalance, asymmetrical warfare, this they have an asymmetric advantage, which negates the sophistication of any technology. So, Ramadi, uh, you know, it strikes me that one of the strengths of these tunnels is that they're way deep in the ground. But that's one of the weaknesses yeah. of these tunnels, too. And um, uh, 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 Gaza is on the water. And uh, the Israelis have boats, ships, you know, fighting vessels right out there. Um, they could hook up some seawater, and they could find uh, some openings into the tunnels and pump the seawater into the tunnels. Oh, oh, that would sea be seawater is corrosive, be... and if you if you don't have air, if if you're pumping water and displacing the air, you can't breathe down there. I don't know if if the um, yeah if the if Hamas has has air down there, uh, so it seems to me that uh, you know it's like a fire engine. The the Israeli boats that simply pump seawater into a um, like a fire hose affair, find the first uh, opening and just fill it up. And since it's deep, uh, the water would go down all through the tunnel system, at least that tunnel system, maybe not all because they're, they're different, they're separate tunnel systems, but at least that tunnel system would be, um, you know, made dysfunctional. What do you think about that? It's the most superb idea you have given, Jay, because see, flooding happens in all the metro cities everywhere. It's non, uh, you know, it's uh, not harmful. It's not under any convention. It's not barred by any international organization. It's, it's, it would just make Gaza City, an island for some time. It's one of the best, best. I, I wish IDF is watching this so you know they get this idea from you because it is most non. And uh, there'll be no firepower in the water, is it, Jay? I mean, they cannot blow it up. So that would be, uh, I think, a most sophisticated answer to the gorilla walk that you have given technically, Jay. I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm really speechless. It's, it's like uh, it's like um, uh, judo in the sense you're using oh. the other fellow's advantage and making it your advantage. Yeah. The depth of the Ooh. tunnel becomes your Ooh. advantage. <laughs> what else true, we got? What true. else? It's so easy. To... 
<laughs> so easy to do. Like you said, the sea is just next to them. And they have access to the sea water. No, no, no problem in that. It would be it would be the best solution possible, I think. Robotics and all, it's a bit overwhelming for uh, technology to take over, but this is, I think, would bring out those people. And um, Jay, it's a potent enemy because they know what they're doing. And uh, they have an aim, Jay. See, uh, Israel's goal is to eliminate Hamas. But Hamas' goal is to destroy. And that makes them uh, megalomaniacs. And, uh, you know, Jay, we cannot uh, afford to deal with a megalomaniac because one is enough to destroy a city. And you have a, a, a gang of uh, organization of megalomaniacs. Yeah, we have seen that in their uh, the combat. We have seen in the way they treat the Palestine uh, citizens themselves. We have seen how uh, West Bank has washed its hands of uh, uh, Hamas. Uh, because saying that they are not representative of the Palestine people, there's no unity amongst themselves also, that they present themselves as the true leaders of the Palestine people. And they're stopping civilians from leaving uh, Gaza uh, because on the full onslaught of the Israel army. So, uh, I mean, they are cowards also, but they're pretending to be, uh, <laughs> pretending to be very brave. Let, let's see how it works. I think it should work out in a good favor because, like it or not, eliminating Hamas is a favor to the world because uh, they are going to spread out and create chaos everywhere, like they did in Jordan, they did in Pal uh, no, they did in uh, Egypt. Egypt had to uh, blast out their tunnels in 2010. So they are not uh, uh, only bad with Israel, they are bad with everybody that they see. And uh, uh, it's the inherent nature to be terrorists. Yeah, it's their culture. They're they're from small children. They're trained to hate. That's what they're trained for. So let me ask you one other one other tunnel question here. Um, and this is a hard one. Okay, we know there are what? What did you say? Uh, 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 hundreds of kilometers of tunnels under Gaza, as there are uh, in southern Lebanon. Same thing. Probably the same kind of technology, because in both cases it. It came from Iran, the funding, the technology, all the techniques of building and arming the tunnels. Anyway, in, in, in Gaza, there are 100 and, what you say, 150 kilometers of tunnels. Five, oh, excuse me, five, five, excuse me, 500 there, excuse me, 500 tunnels, um, 500 kilometers of tunnels. So, um, you know, and they're, and they're separate and distinct. They're little systems like, uh, like the New York subway. You get you get this this uh, this group of, of 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 trains and that group of trains and they're not necessarily connected except at special places. So that means there are a lot of access points, and the trick for the Israelis to deal with this, whatever methodology they decide to use, whatever surprises they can you know cook up in order to deal with all the defensive mechanisms. And the surprises that Hamas has built in the tunnels, the Israelis are going to have to find the access points, as you said. Um, and the access points, you know, I mean, I've seen photographs of the access points. It's just big enough for one individual to get through the, the floor or whatever the access point is, whether it's in a building or, or in a field or a cemetery, whatever it is. Um, so the access point would be what? No bigger than two feet by two feet. No bigger than that, probably smaller. And it would have a flap on it, and it would be covered with something like a rug or who knows, grass or straw or something, anything. <clears throat> it's hard to find. It's not necessarily visible. I mean, it's built not to be visible. Um, and all it is is a hole in the ground because it goes straight down. These uh, these access points have a ladder, and you have to climb down a vertical 90-degree ladder to get to the next level where you can actually walk in, in the tunnel. And that's a, that's a substantial distance and climb. So how, what kind of technology, what kind of surprises can the Israelis develop to locate the access points? 
It's critical for them, don't you think? Jake, time is running out because of the social media reactions and the pressure, world pressure of countries on, you know, uh, building on Israel to uh, put up a ceasefire. But the retaliation has to be there. They have to deal with rat holes. So, uh, Jay, uh, this kind of uh, finding access points was difficult. So, Israel took the decision of evacuating entire Gaza of uh, uh, the civilians so that they could carpet bomb it destroy everything, and then they could actually see which are the access points clearly. They cannot, it's not possible for them to have civilians existing over there and, you know, access points being available to these people. So they decided with the extreme uh, uh, conditions of stopping food, water, electricity to Gaza, saying civilians have to mandatory come out of Gaza because they need to carry out a military operation to eliminate Hamas. It was as clear as that that they gave it because, CJ, if we go uh, combing, uh, in, in combing operations and trying to find access points, it will take another 3,500 years. Correct. So I can, think, I can have... think of two technologies oh. um, by which they can, uh, they can identify the access points. One is uh, air pressure. Um, so maybe it's a bomb or some kind of uh, instrument that changes the air pressure in the neighborhood. Uh, and if, uh, in other words, the pressure on the, on, the, on, the, on the cap of that access point would be X. Um, but if there were negative pressure above the cap, then uh, the, it would open it or it would move it. And, and, and somehow the difference in pressure could be measured. That would be that would be a great thing if they knew where the access points were somehow with some sophisticated way to measure the difference in 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 the the tunnel versus the outside. The other the other thing that comes to mind, and this is really old fashioned, and it, and it, and I'm tripping off what you said a minute ago. You know, it's clear enough that a lot of the Palestinians in Hamas and a lot of the Palestinians in in, um, in Gaza don't like don't like the, uh, the Hamas. Hamas have been treated badly. They they have stolen their money, stolen their food, water, fuel, and they will continue to do that. So there's a certain amount of resentment, um, and um, you know I think that 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 may be coming out now that Gaza is so destroyed, and some of them may properly resent Hamas uh, for being there and calling all of this down on their heads. Uh, so they may be good targets for intelligence. This is the old fashioned way to find access points is to find people who will show them to you. And I think that's probably the Israelis best bet um, to yeah. find people who are a little, um, you know, disenchanted um, with Hamas and who will just point them, just point it out, point it out for me. Just tell me where it is. Okay, then the Israelis will have a head start on dealing yeah. with that town. What do you think? Yeah, you remember the JP spoke about Moser Hussein, who was the son of Hamas. He got so fed up with the setup organization. He himself became part of the Israeli setup, and he had a handler, and he could coordinate the uh, uh, intelligence on both sides, and, you know, help Israel find a solution. Now, Jay, you have uh, civilians who are uh, now refugees and have to find a place to live. And uh, Hamas is uh, a terrorist organization which has, uh, they have used these civilians to such a uh, horrible extent that uh, they have not kept any space for us to, uh, you know, Israel allowed them to function they gave them a chance to function. They had the civilians to uh, um, build, construct their houses. And Hamas has risen to this level because Israel, you know, has allowed Gaza to exist and flourish. But if you're going to use it as a vantage point to get a terrorist attack into mainland Israel, that becomes, you know, they, it becomes target for uh, retaliation. And these people who will be our intelligence check will be such solid 
intelligence because they are the ones who are conditioned by this kind of uh, retribution and retaliation. So they are going to be the best assets that Israel has. But I know one thing, Jay, you cannot trust some people. <laughs> you just cannot trust them because they have an inherent trait of disloyalty. They do not uh, possess that, uh, you know, when you are loyal to something, you have to continue it till a long time. These people change for benefits. And that is the problem that we have. We cannot afford somebody to help and then twist and change at the last minute. They would put uh, Israel at a more sensitive point. And they would, they would have more access. They would leak out more on the other side, I think. So, yeah, double, uh, double agents, trust. you're right. That's a real risk. Better not to trust and, you know, have a little bit of hurt rather than trust and be in a, um, <laughs> in a soup <laughs> that way. So I, I don't trust easily. <laughs> no. Well, I, the, uh, I guess the good news is that if they identify uh, uh, a, uh, an access point, it's easy to verify, you know. Um, they just uh, they point, they show what building, what plot of land, where it is, and the Israelis can verify that. The problem, and I think you're right, the problem is that access point itself may be booby-trapped. Yes, and so yes, they yes. could be working for both sides and, and um, you know, suck the Israelis into a deadly situation. So the yeah, Israelis have to be very careful right. with intelligence. They are ready with the counter combat. They knew that this retaliation would come. They are just waiting for, you know, the Israel army to come in. Uh, otherwise, why would they wait, Jay? I mean, it's a very uh, a big question to ask. They are waiting in ambush. And that is a big thing of guerrilla warfare, to wait for uh, the enemy to approach you and then show your true potential. That is the fear that we all have. That And that is a strategic uh, calculation that has to be taken for the safety of history. Okay, we got to go. Uh, Rupmati Kandakar, our, our uh, world reporter here on, on Global Connections, will be back with more. All these things will unfold. Thank you so much, Rupmati. One, one line, one line. Why isn't Gaza running out of rockets? They should run out of rockets. They're running out of water, electricity, food. Why they're not running out of rockets? Interesting question. <laughs> well, let's watch. Let's watch. We'll be back together. You'll see. Thank you so much, Rupmati. Thank you so much, Jay. Aloha.